Now, uh, another shader I want to quickly create is a silk shader. Now, the way uh, silk shaders and silk works is kind of a bit different, and the highlights are playing with you. There is no specific uh, order here. You can see the highlights, for example, on these folds are different from the highlights on this one. Uh, I've created a very realistic silk shaders in Maxwell Render uh, using uh, without using any curve, but uh, in Arnold for Cinema 4D, I wasn't able to create that uh, look. Um, you know, without using any curve. Uh, so I'm gonna be uh, trying to recreate that here. Uh, so let's just create a new standard shader. So that's going to be our silk. Let me apply it here. And first of all, for silk, we need a different uh, curve and uh, as we need a more complex curve, the facing ratio won't work. So we are going to be using a simple utility node. So here we go. And this is what we are getting by default. And let me just use a RAM flow to control the curve. And now Let's use a mix. And for the first color, I'm going to be using this purple and for the second one, this one. And now in the curve, we need to control the highlights a bit differently. So now actually this curve, uh, the credit uh, that for the curve that I'll be creating right now goes to viscorbel.com. He has a good tip on creating silk shaders in very 4 3ds Max. So we're just trying to, you know, work with the highlights a bit differently. And you can see we uh, don't put the highlights at the exact center. We are trying to put it in about you know 40, about 35 degree angle, something like this. So maybe we're just trying to maybe create something like this. I'm just going to work on this uh, curve a bit more uh, to make it exactly as I like, and I'll be back. So here is the curve that we have, and as you can see, uh, we have this highlights here at about maybe. Uh, 20 uh, degrees and uh, we get these darker spots and uh, something like this will give a very nice uh, silk shader so I can now connect this to diffuse color and if I connect it directly and run the IPR you should be able to see a very beautiful silk shader so let me just wait for the IPR to be finished and I'll be back. So here is our beautiful uh, silk or satin shader here. Right? Now, <clears throat> uh, the next thing and the final shader I want to create is a simple towel shader. Let's create a new standard shader. And for this one, we're going to be using displacement mapping. Otherwise, it won't work. So. Let's, I'm just going to be using a simple facing ratio node for the colors. And let's lay down a mix node too. For the colors, I'm going to be using this color. And for the second color, this color. And let's just connect this the mix amount and this is the fuse color and if I run the IPR we're getting the opposite of what we want so let me invert the facing ratio node first of all and if I just come to the facing ratio increase the bias maybe do something like this 
and I think this will work. So that's the color for our towel. And now for the displacement map, let's first lay down an image and a displacement node, a normal displacement node. So let's insert after main as a displacement map. Now for the image, we're going to be using this towel.png. And let's first of all see the distribution on this one. Let's maybe go to something like 0 0.2, 0 0.2. That's too big. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That's better. Maybe 0 0.6. Okay, that's good. And now for the displacement map, I know that's a very huge number. So let's go to something like zero one. Let's connect the standard shader and also connect the displacement map to the Arnold displacement ports. And as you can see, we are starting to get some results. Uh, the first thing I wanna do First of all, I'm going to also save this. I'm going to stop the IPR and increase the uh, subdivision iteration to something like four, even five. And if I just render this part, maybe. It's gonna take some time because now we're using uh, much higher polys, so and we're using displacement mapping. So, so this is what we are getting. As you can see, it's very close uh, to a towel. What I'm going to do just to increase the, maybe something like 0 0.015 and see what we're gonna get. So now this is the result that we are getting. I'm going to go between those two values. Something like this would possibly work. And there we go, we have it. Uh, what I also can do, just to be sure, even though we possibly won't need it, I'm going to inc increase my bound uh, padding to something, IX1 actually, so great. Make sure if your bound padding is zero to increase it to one, just to be sure, even though we possibly don't need it in this case, but it's a good measure. So I'm just going to render the entire thing and I'll be back with you. So here is our towel shader, and as you can see, it's beautiful. Maybe we can decrease the displacement scale, but I think, uh, you know, it's not necessary. We have a beautiful shader. Uh, now what I'm going to do is to render all of these uh, shaders that we created with higher quality settings and bigger dimensions, and I'll be back for the finishing thoughts. Uh, so the renders are finished, and here is our simple velvet our fuzzy version so you can see the one that we added this pattern and then we have this crushed distressed velvet and this cotton the colored version the silk or satin and finally the towel thanks for watching this video tutorial it was a free sample from our course developing realistic shaders in normal for cinema 4d volume one to see the rest of this lesson and tons of other video tutorials, make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.